Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having a fantastic weekend. I am cheating in so much as I am recording the chicken and garden update. Wait for it on a Tuesday. This is because it's going to rain a lot from Wednesday uh, onwards. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and into next week, it's going to rain a lot. And I really did not want to wander around the garden and talk about my garden while it was chucking down with rain. I'm sorry, that, that was a line I did not want to cross if I didn't have to. But there is something that I do want to show you in the garden. While I haven't done a whole lot because I've been away, I was in Washington DC last week. Thanks to Kate for filling in. Her garden and chicken update was far more interesting than I've got for you this week. All I can say is that the grass is really turning a lovely lush colour. It's been really nice. Let me wander around the back and I'll show you. It's really good to see because last year we had such a lot of rain at the end of the year that a lot of the grass didn't actually grow. Um, it just became this messy, muddy, horrible thing. And I spent a large proportion of, of last summer, I cut it until quite late in the year. And this year I've actually done the opposite. I've actually waited until... Well, I don't think I have actually cut this grass for like three months. And it means that a lot of the grasses, a lot of the natural grasses have come back up. There's still a few bald spots here and there, but it's really been nice to see the grass recover. Now, obviously on a slope, let me try and hold the camera basically level you can see that there is quite a slope to this garden. I don't normally talk about it all that much, but when there's nothing holding the grass, sorry, when there's nothing holding the soil together, you get a lot of erosion. You get a lot of, of, of basically rivers of water when it rains, you get lots of soil. It's difficult to walk on because it's just loose. And so, Allowing the grass to grow, allowing this to actually properly um, cover itself means that we have less problems with erosion. Now, there are a few things here that I need to kind of sort out and I need to figure out a good ground cover that will help hold this in. Obviously, the, the fittings of the house um, are right there. So... We want to try and, and prevent the house from falling down the hill as well, obviously. I say that in jest. I know that from an architectural and an engineering perspective, uh, this ain't going anywhere anytime soon. It was built in 2006, I think. And so it's either 2004 or 2006. And so this would be built to code, to the latest code. Uh, we have retaining walls, etc., etc. So it's not, it's not going to go anywhere. Don't worry. One thing that has happened in the last week, although I haven't really done a whole lot of gardening, is that we've had our first frost of the year. And so a lot of the plants that don't like the cold, uh, my geraniums, uh, they've gone inside. My fuchsias are now in the greenhouse. And also my abutilon, which is basically a, a, a maple, um, from Asia is they're all inside they're all lovely and warm they're all not going to be affected by the frost and that's a good thing because the frost has been was I think it was minus two the other night minus two celsius if you watch the channel regularly you'll know that I don't deal in fahrenheit I find fahrenheit very confusing I like things to be based on things that are easy to measure like I don't know, the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. That seems like a smart move. I am, however, going to grab some of these mini onions and use those for supper tonight. They haven't really grown particularly well this year, but that's fine. I'm going to come out and try a 
a slightly different approach with onions next year. Namely, I'm going to put them in the ground when they are starts rather than these. I mean, I could dry these out and then use them next year as starts, but I probably won't. Let's show you what's going on here. So the sprouts, as you know, I had problems with whitefly. They now appear to have got through that whitefly infestation and they're starting to grow again, which is wonderful. And over here, look at this. I know I need to weed. Don't judge me. Uh, we actually now have some broccoli coming, some winter broccoli. So yay, that is good. My beans are still doing great. And I think that I have a winter cabbage or two here that I had planted and forgotten about. As regular people who watch the channel will know, I very often forget. I'm, I'm not forgetful per se. I just have lots of other things come into my mind and then I get distracted. And so part of doing gardening is being surprised and happy when things come along that you forgot about. And you go, oh, I forgot about this thing. Now I can enjoy it. So here in the greenhouse, where I had the, the tomatoes and the cucumbers earlier this year, it's surprising how much extra warmth there is in here. And look at this. I have a random cucumber that has, it's grown very slowly this year. But look, I've got one cucumber here and one cucumber here. It's not getting cold enough at night to make this completely um, dangerous for them. So I'm just going to leave them and see how long it takes for them to grow. And then over here, some of my peppers have actually started to produce fruit, which is bizarre. They like hot weather. What the heck, guys? They did nothing during the summer. And then now they're growing, which makes no sense to me, but I'm not going to judge. That would be a bad thing to do. All right. In terms of the chickens, chickens are fed up because they're all molting right now. So none of them are producing eggs and they're all feeling a bit sorry for themselves. But I'm actually going to put them to bed because it's going to be dusk fairly soon as this video. I'm sure Emma's is going to have to do like huge amounts of noise reduction on this to make it look anywhere near decent because it's late in the evening. And I, you see the sunlight coming through there. And as I said, I'm filming this late on Tuesday because I don't want to get wet later in the week. It does look a little bit like there's been a murder or a murder as I was some, some comedy show from the UK I was talking about Scottish police dramas and they always used to say, it's been a murder. But you can see here, all these feathers, they're fine. They're fine and healthy. It's just that they're all molting. And look, they all look so scraggly and horrible right now, but it's okay. They're getting the, their fresh feathers and that will mean that they have plenty of warm for the winter. They'll be nice and warm with their fresh new feathers. And it will also mean that some of the youngsters will be able to fly again which means I'll probably have to do something with this, this run. I am actually contemplating moving the run for the winter because I think it will mean that we'll be able to allow the grass here, which is obviously not in a good, good state of repair. If we move it so they can go down there, maybe hopefully it will mean that we get some better grass for the hens. To finish though, I'm gonna walk this way. Um, and by the way, nothing to do with gardens or chickens. Check out my new um, cover for, for Hema, the Vectrex VX1. I took it for a ride last Sunday with bled brakes and Hema is doing amazingly well. The problem now is that I think the brakes are working well enough. I think they do eventually need to be replaced because the, the pistons, I think, are probably not 100 percent, but um, the gearbox is leaking. There's a little bit of oil the other day, which is not good. Anyway, my parsnips, look at this. Parsnips are still growing, and I think this has been one of my 
best crops this year. If you look in here, they're just still growing and doing incredibly well. But <laughs> I'm laughing because we have now had a frost or two. Check this out. If I go down here a little bit, can you see down there? Look at this. These are new potatoes that are growing. <laughs> and I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> potatoes shouldn't be growing. These are the volunteer potatoes from a couple of years ago. They shouldn't be growing right now, but they are. Uh, check out my carrots in here. I've got some lovely big old carrots. There's one right here, look. There's going to be, I'm going to leave them in. But I will be having those around Thanksgiving, probably. There's another one here. And I've got to take this out. This is a bramble that's come up through the bottom. Uh, so they are growing really well. Parsnips from two years ago are doing incredibly well. And then over here, we have, again, and this is kind of an experiment. So if you have an area where it's there's a lot of frost and you have shelter the ground that is given some kind of shelter is generally in less of a nasty position so if you look here we have potatoes in here in the summer right but now if i look in here i don't know if i'll see any but we have some potatoes growing. There's one right there. We have potatoes growing. I'm just going to leave them. This looks healthy. I'm not sure about this one. This one looks healthy and I'm just going to let it grow. And then maybe in a, a, a couple of weeks, I will have some fresh new potatoes, which in the middle of November, in a couple of weeks time, I don't think we've got any snow forecast. Obviously this winter is supposed to be warmer and milder than last year's uh, winter, which was incredibly hard. So hopefully we'll have some potatoes, fresh new potatoes for Thanksgiving. Uh, finally, let's show you these apples. These apples are still growing. They don't want to come off yet. Some of them have been eaten, as you can see. This one, someone has eaten this. So I'm going to throw that into the bush and hopefully a critter will find that. Um, but some of them are doing just great. Look, look at these ones. They're still doing great. They're still on the tree. Uh, I'm going to be making some more apple um, apple things this weekend. Maybe an apple pie or two or maybe an apple crumble. But these all do need to come off the tree because as you can see, the leaves are starting to turn. And once the leaves turn, obviously everything needs to be off the tree. But if you look... Um, even this tree, which, you know, we got all of the fruit off from this one earlier. It's only really starting to, the leaves are only just starting to turn. So it is incredibly weird that we have such a late season. And our first frost, last week of October, um, I'm actually finishing filming this even right at the end of October. Obviously, it's going to be November by the time you see this. And that means I will be 44. Goodness gracious. It's my birthday. It was my birthday on Wednesday this week. And I know some of you know, and some of you sent birthday wishes. I'm very grateful for those. So anyway, that is everything that's going on in my garden. Um, the unexpected volunteer potatoes, I think, are the most impossible thing <laughs> that I've seen. I was eating tomatoes from the greenhouse until... Uh, Tuesday this week, we I had a, a spaghetti uh, made with uh, a spaghetti bolognese sauce made with with tomatoes from my garden, and that was the last lot of tomatoes I had. And again, just crazy to think that those tomatoes first came in in like June, July, and I was eating them all the way through until the very end of October. Anyway, if you celebrated Halloween this week, I hope you had a lovely time. Uh, if you are doing your own gardening this week, let me know in the comments below what you're getting up to. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can be 100% independent. 
If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There's a range of different tiers you can sign up for, from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, David McConnell, Dennis Lyon, James Cardelli, Bennett Yee, Bigfoot Research, Ben Dradle, Stuart Jocelyn, Cole, Chafilla5555, Charles Stanton, Daniel Snyder and Scotty. Thanks for all becoming part of the TE crew. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations and we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. We'll throw in a link to the address below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below too. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think that this one is also well worth a look. See you soon and as always, 